Hey guys, welcome back. I'm doing another Amish Midnight style cooking video today. So most of the recipes I would say are pretty traditional, um, but you'll also find a few that are pretty common. I am going to be baking something that I've actually made before on my channel, but it's been a while and I thought there's been a lot of new people since then and I wanted to make this anyway, so I decided I'm just going to make it. So it's going to be poor man's steak, which is one of my husband's favorites. And I'm going to do twice baked potatoes, also a really yummy salad that I actually found on Pinterest. So good and I made it the other day and I'm going to make it again. It's really easy and it's perfect for fall. And then I'm going to be doing a side dish which is the Amish noodles or Amish style noodles. I want to make some just for tonight for an easy uh, grab and go before we have the boys baseball practice. And then I also filmed some monster cookies that I made the other week. Those are really, really good. I love them so much. And I also might do another dessert or bar recipe of some sort. So quite a lot of recipes packed into one. If you're new, my name is Lynette. I grew up Amish and a Mennonite. Also, I wanted to thank Walnut Creek Foods for sponsoring today's video. I will talk about them in a little while. I'm gonna be doing mostly voiceover in this video just in an effort to keep it <laughs> shorter. So. I will explain things as I go and also have my recipes in the description box. Without further ado, I'm gonna get started and hopefully you guys enjoy the video. So I'm using russet potatoes, which are great for baking. First of all, make sure you wash them really well. And then I like to use some oil, preferably olive oil, and just rub it over the potato. It helps with the baking. And then also make sure you prick your potatoes with a fork and then they're ready for baking and I bake them for an hour or a little longer kind of depends on you know how big your potatoes are So I do have to say, this recipe turned out amazing and I'll put it in the description box. All of these will put, be put down there, but the recipe got rave reviews from my husband and the boys, which is a win because the boys are pretty picky. My husband thought that these were actually the best potatoes he's probably ever had, which was <laughs> a huge compliment. So. Basically, you're gonna leave the potatoes to cool a little bit after you get them out of the oven, and then you're gonna be very careful to scoop out the inside of the potato. Leave a little bit of a, a rim there, and then once you have the, the middle scooped out, you're gonna put it in a bowl and use a mixer, preferably, to uh, just mix the potatoes just exactly how you would do uh, mashed potatoes. Now these were not completely lump free, but honestly I didn't really think about it after you know I had all it mixed and then baked again. So I put in quite a lot of butter and also sour cream and then some salt and pepper and some cheddar cheese and just mix that all around. I also decided to add a little bit of half and half because I thought it could use a little bit more fluff and just some more creaminess, which I think helped a lot. And then once you have that all mixed together, you're just gonna go ahead and scoop the filling back into the potatoes. You'll have extra filling, but that's okay. It's just kind of how it works. But you don't wanna fill the potatoes too full. Basically level maybe a little bit more, but you're, you're gonna be putting on more cheese and then also bacon bits and stuff. So make sure you don't heap them too much or they're just gonna be kind of like exploding over the potato once you bake them. But these are great to be able to make ahead, and this is what I did. I made them the day before, put them in the fridge, and then the next night I was able to bake them. So I cheated and used the bought and bacon bits. These were like the real kind. So that, that was really easy. I also put some chives on top, which I think added a lot. I love chives. I don't often have them on hand, but that really added something and then you're going to bake these for, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour. And I actually uh, put them in my Traeger along with my poor man's steak, which you'll see in a little bit. But you can totally bake them in your oven. However, the smoke flavor does add something. So the next thing I'm doing is the Amish noodles. And I like to brown the butter. That, I feel like, makes the noodles. It just adds so much more flavor. But in the meantime, I wanted to talk about Walnut Creek Foods. You can see the can I have there. 
um, just putting some cream of chicken in there. But uh, I have been privileged to be working with them for over a year and I love their company. I talk about them all the time because it's something I truly love and I grew up using. They try to make as many products themselves as they can. They're based in Holmes County. Uh, they have several um, Walnut Creek cheese stores is what they're called and you can go visit them, shop at them. I've shown them numerous times in my previous videos. I just did a Holmes County uh, trip video just a little while ago in case you haven't seen that. Uh, it shows you around and you can also shop for their things online. They have a lot of products that you can actually buy and have delivered to your house if you don't have a store near you. And that's something I always like to remind people. Uh, you might be able to find their products just in little stores, deli uh, stores, things like that. They have a lot of deli meats and cheeses. So make sure you check out the link in the description box for walnutcreekcheese.com. I would love that. All right, so here's the noodles. I paired it with leftover baked beans. These are from a Sam's Club. Mixed a couple extra in there as well, but they have amazing barbecue brisket baked beans. Literally probably the best I've ever had. So and then I have a trail bologna sandwich. Generally, we would pair it with Swiss cheese. Walnut Creek cheese actually um, features this. It's like a trail bologna in Swiss, they call it. And it's much better with Swiss, but I didn't have Swiss cheese and this actually has cheese in the bologna already, so I just used the Colby stuff that I already had on hand in order to try and kind of make it a complete meal for tonight. Really easy and quick. The noodles are amazing. I love these. Uh, they're definitely a very traditional Amish style noodle. You'd see them at maybe funerals and things like that. Um, so they're very easy and really yummy. Okay, moving on to the poor man's steak. I am using salt, pepper, Greek seasoning, onion, milk, saltine crackers, ground beef, and I think that's it. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just mix it all together, have the onion chopped pretty finely if you can, and you're not gonna use a whole onion, but I just chopped it up anyway. And then you're gonna go ahead and yeah, mix it together, and I'll explain some more in a little bit. I like to just put the meat in a pan and I would say probably like half inch, three fourth inch thick. And the one pan I'm just gonna freeze and use later. So this can also be uh, baked in the oven. That's typically how people do it. Or you can fry this hamburger mixture on the oven. So basically the first step is gonna be, you're gonna put it in the fridge for a couple hours at least, or even overnight. And then you have this sauce here that I'm making, but you can either fry the meat a little bit and then bake it, or you can grill it like I like to do and then fully bake it. Um, the grill just adds like an extra flavor, I think. And I really like that. Plus it doesn't heat up my house, which is what I was doing uh, with this and then the potatoes as well. So just grill it a little bit. Uh, doesn't have to be cooked all the way through. And then you're just gonna go ahead and put it back in the pan along with the sauce that I made. It's a really easy sauce, but you're just gonna kind of put that in there, layer it together, and then it's gonna be ready to either bake or uh, fully grill, which I actually put it back in my smoker uh, because it acts as an oven. It's a wood fire grill, it's a Traeger grill, and we absolutely love it. So I put both of these in the grill for probably, I don't know, 45 minutes, however long it takes to make sure your meat is properly cooked through and you know the potatoes to be hot. So moving on to the salad. I used a green, like a spring lettuce, I guess you would call it, and to put in dried craisins, 
um, the candied maple pecans. You could also use a different type of uh, pecan, but that's what I like to use. It has extra flavor. And then feta cheese. You could also add mozzarella if you'd want. Uh, I didn't have any. And then pears. And it's so amazing. You use a poppy seed dressing. I just cheated and bought a Panera Bread style poppy seed dressing at the store. You could also make your own. And it is so good and it's perfect for fall. So here's a look at the potatoes and the steak and also the salad. These potatoes were definitely a hit and I don't know why I haven't made them more in the past. They're not hard and it's something you can do ahead which is awesome. So we all love them and there's a look at the salad. I just add a little bit of dressing to it. You don't want too much otherwise it's going to be kind of soggy. And then also the poor man's steak which I'll show you in a little bit. I did want to share a couple of books that I was sent earlier this year from the Gospel Bookstore in Holmes County, Ohio. She sent me the Food from the Heart cookbook, which I had been wanting to try. I really, really like this cookbook. Um, this lady is not necessarily like a Mennonite or anything, but I get a lot of questions as far as what cookbooks do I recommend and things like that. So these are just a few new ones. This one is a mom and daughter. Um, they are Mennonite farmhouse kitchen the way they put this one up is sort of by season So you have like a winter season fall season summer and spring and I haven't tried a ton of recipes yet I've tried a few I think and I definitely think this is a really good one So I'll have this in the description box and then this one has lots of beautiful pictures There's just so many yummy looking things this recipe especially Oh my goodness, it is just phenomenal. It's called the Gathering Dessert. You guys definitely need to try that one. And just a lot of different um, really good you know, recipes and pretty basic. I'd say it's nothing like terribly fancy, maybe a little bit more than what I would generally cook with, but um, there are just a lot of good recipes and I definitely have some more that I could try things like that. So thought I'd just recommend those to you guys. Food from the heart and a farmhouse kitchen. Lastly, I'm going to share a monster cookie recipe with you. I know there's a lot of them out there. My recipe does not call for flour and I think that's key. Uh, I feel like flour dries them out and this one just has like peanut butter and then your sugars and oatmeal and things like that and they're so amazing. They were really really good and moist. So I will leave the recipe in the description box and hopefully you guys will enjoy that if you're needing some recipes like that. Another thing that is definitely not healthy but it is so good is I like to dip them in powdered sugar and I don't know if all monster cookie recipes call for that I don't really feel like they do but this is what I consider a monster cookie is when they're dipped in a powdered sugar kind of in a little extra step to do but there it's so worth it so then you just go ahead and bake them don't over bake them otherwise they tend to kind of you know become a little dry but these are great you can freeze them they freeze very well so I love this recipe and I hope you guys do as well. All right guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it gave you some inspiration. I know that I'm always lacking in ideas. That's my biggest problem is coming up with what to make. So I hope this gave you some inspiration. Also, if you have any requests, leave them down below and I'll try to keep them in mind. But yeah, make sure you check out the link for Walnut Creek Foods in the description box. It's walnutcreekcheese.com. And that is gonna be it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next week. Bye guys.